Hi, and uh, welcome to another JBoss Operations Network video. In this uh, video, we're going to take a look at installing J or first downloading the Operations Network distribution from the Customer Support Portal, then also downloading the license that you'll need to activate it, as well as downloading some of the plugins needed to see um, and monitor the architectural components like the SOA platform or um, Tomcat or uh, the application platform. So we'll take a look at all of those uh, together then I'll even um, walk you through uh, going through the John screen loading up that license file and um, getting John to be configured initially. Now I'm not going to go through the database configuration in this um, video but I will do that at a later time so uh, be on the lookout for that. Okay so we'll start off with the customer support portal. Um, as you can tell, uh, right here, typically what I do is uh, you can go to support.redhat.com slash jbossnetwork, or you can just go to network.jboss.com. Once you go there, it'll usually prompt you for a login screen if you're not already logged in. I happen to be logged in. Um, and then it'll give you the option, of course, to open new cases, which some of you may be familiar with, as well as the ability to go in and take a look at the software that we have. So we're looking for the operations network. So you'll see listed under JBoss Operations Network. Once you select that, it'll tell you the distributions we have available. It'll give you the ability to see what different versions we have access to. Um, and uh, currently the latest version is 2.3.1. So we're going to go ahead and download that base distribution. You'll also notice, depending on your entitlement, um, you'll have access to a specific license file. You will need to download this as well. You will want to right click on it and choose save link as in order to save it as an XML file. So I'll choose that. You'll notice when I choose save link as, it's going to automatically select XML. If it does not, you're going to want to change it to the XML document format. Then we will, through that, um, through this GUI also provide the name. I would just leave the name the same and I actually put it in the base installation directory of John. But that's not necessary either. Um, whichever, whatever you choose to do there. All right, so I'll say cancel because I already have it listed there. Um, and then the next thing you may want to do is download the Operations Network plugin. So you'll notice there are several. We have John for EAP, John for EWS, and John for SOAP. So you'll notice here we have a plugin plat, plugin pack <laughs> for um, for uh, EAP. So I would go ahead and download that to a directory as well. So I'm going to take you into where I have downloaded these resources. So you'll notice here under downloads, I will have my plugin my plugin packs. I've actually extracted them already. When you extract them, you'll see really they're just a bunch of jar files and a README. The README will walk you through the installation of these plugins. But typically, what you will do is take those jar files and you will copy them into the plugins directory. This directory is listed in that README file for each plugin. But I'll just show you where that is really quickly. You'll see all of my JBoss installations here. We have the John server. 2.3.1 that we've extracted to this directory. We then go into the application server, JBoss AS, into the server, which we have default. And inside that server, we'll have a deployment directory, which most of you are familiar with. And then you'll notice we have an application specific to this um, architecture called rhq.ear. Inside the rhq.ear, there is an application that we're going to be specifically interested in, which is the rhq downloads directory. Um, and then in the downloads directory, you will see RHQ plugins. So that's where you'll copy all of those plugins. I've already done that, so you can see some of them listed here. Uh, initially, you'll see maybe five or six listed here. So you'll just be adding to that every time you add a plugin. Again, this is documented fully in the README that's provided as part of your plugin download. Okay, so take a look at that. Once that is done, you'll want to go over um, and, uh, of course, make sure that your uh, JBoss Operations Network installation knows what to do. Um, in other words, it knows where your Java home is and, and those configuration parameters are set up properly. Uh, and then you'll execute this RHQ server.sh. So the first thing I'm going to do is change directories over to where that is located. And then I'm going to run the RHQ server command with the console parameter to let it know I'd like to run it in console format. and All that means is that it'll distribute all of the log information directly to this terminal screen. So as soon as I do that, you'll notice what happens is the RHQJVM 
PID file is created so that you have an idea of what process um, was created to support this application server. And it usually takes about a minute to start up. So while that's happening, again, just to reiterate, once we extract out the John server um, installation or base distribution that came from the customer support portal, you'll see it has a bin directory, which is where you'll go in to set up the initial configuration parameters so it can find the Java uh, virtual machine it'll be running on. If you're on Windows, you'll be using the wrapper in order to start up the operations network. Then you'll also remember where we downloaded that license. So that's here as well. We'll be using that in just a moment. So you'll see here my server started up in about 42 seconds. So what we're going to do now is uh, head on over to uh, our GUI and start it up. So you could do that by first hitting localhost. And then what I want to do is launch John, which is on port 7080. Once I do that, it'll ask me to log in by default. When you install John, it'll create a user called RHQ admin. Again, this video doesn't actually go through that initial installation process, but another video will. So if you want um, some support or, or to see how that's done, please take a look at that video. Um, okay, so at this point, we'll log in. And what it'll say is, hey, you just installed John. Great, thanks, congratulations. But you really need to add that license. So remember, we did download the license. So we'll go in and choose Update License. We'll go and browse to where that is, which is in the installation of our John Server 231. There it is. We'll say Open. And we'll say OK. Once we do that, it'll then say John has successfully been updated with your new license select the dashboard to go and get started. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. I download it, go to the dashboard, and we're in business. Now at this point, we don't have an agent running, we don't have any application servers running, we don't have EWS or portal or any of that, so you'll notice all of this says zero. So now, right now, the John server is prepared for us to start loading up agents and turning on those servers and begin monitoring. So you'll see that in the next video. Thanks a lot, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was somewhat useful, and I will talk to you soon.